I guess sorry about that. The broadcast failed on this phone. I don't need my Wi-Fi. He said it's bad weather out there because of these storms. I haven't even looked to see what's going on with these storms. But you should definitely never do these drills. If you said people doing these drills are suffering from a failure to see the big picture, really, they're idiots. They don't have any idea what they're doing. Stopping a dog from doing something in the moment and training a dog not to do something. You have to tell people certain things are unrealistic. If your main focus of life is the fact that this dog is afraid of your vacuum and barks at it, and you can't manage that, if your life is so consumed with vacuuming that it's crucial that during this all-consuming vacuuming that you're doing, that this dog stay on this cot. Nobody, you can't vacuum and force a dog to stay on a cot at the same time. If you said, yes, you can, it's taking two full-grown men to get that 30-pound dog to stay on a cot in a controlled room with a leash and an electronic collar. So if you said, somebody at home alone, if you said, I already think of vacuuming is tedious. The last thing I want to think is, uh, okay. Get the dog, get the cot, get the 30-foot line and grab the vacuum and let's roll. Come on. It's ridiculous. Look at this idiot. Oh my God, it's, it's embarrassing. And if you say, what do they put? Vacuum attacker to holding place. If you said, so the dog now, the, the problem is solved. It's no longer afraid of the vacuum. And so this guy's thousands of dollars has gone to good use. Look at this idiot. Off Leash Canine has videos of this all the time. And the fact that Taylor, I mean, he is a jerk. He is used to pushing people around, literally and figuratively. If he said word is, that girl Jenny said he got kicked off the police force for using excessive force on people. I want you to watch what he does to this guy. It took me a minute to see what it was. If he said he's now talking a bunch of bullshit. So now you've got two full grown men leaning over a dog on a cot that doesn't want to be there. If you said this all oh, just looks, you can tell it's not legit. Come on, watch. Taylor is going to push the guy with the vacuum. If you said the bottom of a filthy vacuum, mm -hmm. watch him. If you said, when I envision dog training, this is what I see me in a vacuum. If you said, off leash canine does this all the time, so. Watch, he's gonna push this guy with this vacuum. Watch. Watch, look, look, look. You said because it was that important that the guy stand two feet to the left. Yeah, apparently. So if you said this is going to affect a permanent behavior change in the dog, and if you said the guy's actually even going to threaten it with his finger, that's Taylor's big move. Zach George does it too. If you said these people all have these same little traits because they're all ranked novices, he's now going to vacuum all the way around the dog, even vacuuming on the cot. If you said it has loads of practical application, I mean, my job as a vacuumer requires that my dog not be afraid. They bark at a vacuum because they're afraid. They attack the vacuum because they're afraid. Do you think that I punish Tuffy? Do you think I'm gonna ruin my relationship? If you said now he's gonna vacuum right up on the cot, while this, if you said, well, at least the other guys, the other guy's two feet away from the damn dog. This isn't dog training. If you said the dog is being forced to lay there, Taylor's never vacuumed in his life. So the whole thing is so effing staged. If you say he's gonna put the vacuum actually on the cot. If this isn't dog training, I promise you. Forcing the dog, they literally don't know how to do anything else. If you said the guy's going to stand back and threaten it with his finger right there. 
If you said that, could possibly affect your recall. Could possibly affect your recall? You may never know this thing to come to you. Look at this. If you said that's not gonna, that's not going to destroy the relationship with the dog when day after motherfucking day after motherfucking day. You get this caught in this vacuum out and let's roll. That people just don't, if you said now he's actually vacuuming on the cot. Duke Ferguson, oh, I'm going to show you some of his videos. His are beyond weird. If you said they're all ex-cop good old boys and you just don't like their kind. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Taylor now to me represents everything that's wrong with dog training. Personally, he doesn't even have any substance to look at him. This is a vacuum right up on the dog. If you said the dog is going to get up, do a shake off, and think, thank God that's over. Yes. Who would even tell anyone to do that? Who would subject the dog to that? If you said this is the owner's complaint that it barks at the vacuum, so let's attack that problem. Your job is to say to them, that's just a symptom of a bigger problem. What we need to do now is work on the relationship. For now, let's just put the dog in the other room when we vacuum, okay? Not subject to the dog to being forced to stay while some monster vacuums all around them with a giant shop vac. Because the dog looks comfortable. No, it doesn't. Why would it be comfortable? Look at its head. <laughs> if you said you're not going And then Taylor just keeps on and on and on and on and on. Now we got to get between the owner and the dog and vacuum. If you said, no, that happens all the time, Kelly. If your solution can't be, we need to act, get some basics in place and that's not gonna have anything to do with the dog barking at the vacuum. So for now, let's just do management. How much vacuuming do you really do, dude? Dude, listen, tell wifey, just listen. Lock Max in the room. The trainer said just lock Max in the room for now. We're gonna work on getting other stuff accomplished. And they'll possibly address that later. <laughs> Not here. Give me a couple thousand bucks. We'll force it on a cot while I vacuum around the shop back, back while it temporarily doesn't do the behavior. If you said no, the behavior's all gone. Look at this guy bending over. The behavior isn't gone. Shoe bottom won't even move if you vacuum. You need to vacuum right up to her. So what about Tuffy? Oh, he ferrets the back. So that's the end. That's how the video ends. If you said, well, I don't believe you with the off-leash canine. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't see Nick White vacuuming. The only time you're ever going to see him vacuuming is his staged distractions. Hang on. Holding place. There's no such... That's... They try to use, you know, what sounds like... He said, what's wrong here? So this thing upside down. Oh, sorry. Um, all right, let me show you. Here we go. The the, the off -leash. This is the off -leash canine. I realize now he's in Northern Virginia, where Nick White is. So now he's the top trainer in Northern Virginia instead of this Nick. If you said, is that true? No. Let the bond be with you. All right, so said, what's this chick up to? Yeah, she's going to start vacuuming. You said, is she any good? No. Oh, my God. She's awful. Let me get to the vacuuming part, though. Here we go. Huh? They've already got the vacuum in the background. So if you said, what you're trying to say is Taylor's doing this exact same drill. I don't know. Here, Chicky Poo goes and gets the vacuum.
So if you said that's what you're telling owners at home to do. So how does dogs bark at that? I don't know, I'm gonna have to go out there and see. Nobody's gonna do that. If you said, well, but what's the problem? The problem is, what are you gonna do if the dog gets up? You're gonna abandon the vacuum, go back over there, drag it back to this cot. Again and again and again. Oh, let me see, let me go see what they're barking at. Because I don't know, uh, my man told me there was coyotes out there. I asked her if she saw them. She said she supposedly just heard them making noises. She said, what noises? I don't know. There's no training where you force a dog to stay and vacuum around it. This is just, just these people coming up with ridiculous stage distractions. If you said, I've never, I, I vacuum every single day. If you said, how do you, I just put Tuffy in a different room. The rest of them don't do anything. They might just go away. Mac goes and gets on the couch. If I, if I have, sometimes I have to tell them if he's just laying right in the middle of the floor. You know, the rest of them just go away. You're, you're not forcing them to stay in a car while you vacuum. That's the dumbest drill I've ever heard of. If you said it's just a stage distraction, it's a stage distraction. And, and you're just, you're saying to the dog every time this vacuum comes out, it's actually worse than it was before. You didn't like the vacuum before. Now you're not going to like the fact that I've married up these other actions with the vacuum. I now abandon the vacuum and go after you if you get afraid of the vacuum. I don't like you to be afraid, so I attack you. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to the dog. It doesn't make any sense. If you said Tuffy's really afraid of the vacuum, but he attacks it as, as some sort of display threat sort of thing, yes. Or you could chase him away with it in a minute. If you said, what if it suddenly tripled in size and came at him? Oh, he'd be gone. <laughs> he'd be gone. If the vacuum suddenly tripled in size and went at him, you know, if you said, what does he do now? He just like kind of bites the front of it. You know, he kind of keeps it at a... If you said, why do they do that? And it's very simple for him because it sort of has that retreat reflex. You know, he chases it. It goes back because you're always sort of vacuuming like this motion. It's like, because it has that retreat reflex. He keeps going after it, thinking that he's causing the retreat reflex. Anyway, I'll be live later. Or I don't know. I might even take the day off. If you said, well, I just woke up and I was like trying to think like, do I even have...